In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about naming and writing ionic compounds with multiple oxidation states. Now, in the first nomenclature video, I taught you how to name and write compounds with fixed or single oxidation states. Multiple oxidation states is referring to the fact that many metals have more than one charge. And this would include the transition metals, recall I skipped over them in the first video, along with tin and lead. So I want you to make that note on your periodic table that you started writing on in the first video. Also, I would like to expound a little bit on our saying plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one, zip, and reiterate the fact that these numbers that you've written across the top of your periodic table that I told you you would fully understand once we discussed periodicity and bonding in upcoming units are referring to the ion charge that these groups or families will typically assume. So if we were to look at what charge aluminum would take on, we would say plus three when it ionized. So aluminum is a plus three, that means the aluminum atom has lost one, two, three electrons. It has lost three negatively charged subatomic particles, thereby becoming uh, aluminum plus three, having that positive three charge or oxidation state. Also, we skip the carbon family. That's because these can go either way. And as you can see, tin and lead are in the carbon family. And I have them enclosed here indicating they have multiple oxidation states. That's why we skip the carbon family. And then lastly, the noble gases, we say zip. That's because most of them are unreactive and this does not apply to them. They don't assume a charge because they are what we call inert. They do not react typically in nature. If we zoom in now into the transition metals, this is just one example of how these metals can have more than one oxidation state. So we're going to be using a slightly different method for naming and writing these ionic compounds. They're still ionic because they're still composed of a metal, i.e. a species to the left of the stairs, and a non-metal as species to the right of the stairs, and we'll do some examples here in a minute. I also don't want to leave out the lanthanides and actinides. Although I won't discuss them as much throughout this course, I'll talk about them more in AP chemistry, and they're certainly fascinating. And as you can see, many of them also have multiple oxidation states. All right, so these are also metals as well. Now, moving on, we want to talk now about the charge of the metal. It is indicated with a Roman numeral. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time making a big deal out of this because over the years, students that struggle with nomenclature tend to struggle throughout the course as it builds upon this first unit. So I want you not only to obviously write this down, the charge of the metal. Not how many, but the charge, okay? Is indicated with a Roman numeral. So here are the most common Roman numerals you'll see in this course, and we'll be using them when we're going from the formula to actually writing out the name of the compound. Let's look at this one here. Now, here is the way you would pronounce this. This is iron two chloride. That's how you pronounce this compound, iron two chloride. Now, iron has a charge of plus two. 
And you might be saying, well, how do you know that? Because in this name, a two Roman numeral is used. And the Roman numeral, uh, underline it again, is the charge. It's not how many irons are in the compound. It's the charge of the metal cation. Now, start with what you know. Well, in this case, we know quite a bit. We know the charge of iron is plus two, but we also know the chlorine, this halogen right here, is a minus one charge, okay? And that's something you always know. That's a fixed oxidation state discussed in nomenclature one. So chlorine is a minus one. Remember, we don't include the one. We simply put the minus, and that implies minus one. So here is what is wrong. And this is what many of you will tend to do early on in this course. Iron two chloride. Okay, there's two irons and a chlorine. Wrong. That is incorrect and one of the most common misconceptions in this unit. Remember that the two is not referring to the number of atoms of the cation, but rather the charge being a plus two. So what I'm gonna do at this time is give you a, a, a visual representation of what's going on here. And we need these charges overall to cancel out or balance as discussed in the last video. This overall compound is neutral. So we need positive charges to cancel out negative charges. And in the end, we want the same number so they are balanced and thus cancel. So the charge of iron is plus two. So I've put two pluses around iron. This is a simplified visual representation. That's all it is. And we have chlorine. We'll look at here. Okay, I'm going to cancel one and one. But wait a minute. That leaves one positive charge. That means we're not balanced. That means there's not a, um, the charges are not going to cancel. So let's bring in another chlorine. And now that we've done that, we've canceled for every plus, there's a minus. Now let's count the number of atoms. There's only one iron and there are two chlorine. This is the correct formula for iron two chloride. The charge is represented by the Roman numeral, not the number of atoms. Now, in the first video, I referenced this crisscross method with the caveat that I really, really want you to understand why you're doing it if you choose to use this method. Many students use it and cannot explain why, but it does work. So we have the charge of aluminum is plus three, chlorine minus one. And in this case, the one is shown here to accentuate the fact that we're uh, going to crisscross that number. Notice the one does not show up here because that would be um, unnecessary and incorrect. So if you swap these charges and turn the charge into a subscript, and the subscript represents the number of atoms of those species, it works. And iron or excuse me, aluminum chloride, notice I didn't say aluminum three. And you might say, why? Please take a moment, pause the video, get out your periodic table, and note that aluminum is in a family with fixed oxidation states, and it has a charge of plus three. So we don't use Roman numerals to indicate the charge because there's only a single charge. All right, so... I want to look now at tin and lead. Tin and lead have either a positive two or positive four oxidation state or charge. So they're a bit odd. They do fall into this group, the carbon family that we say skip in our little saying. And this is part of the reason why. So you need to really be aware of that when we're naming 
or writing compounds with tin or lead, we need to use Roman numerals or say lead 2 or tin 4, okay? And we don't need Roman numerals for fixed oxidation states. As I just got done mentioning and in nomenclature one, we didn't use them, okay? Now, there are exceptions. You will realize that throughout this course. I'm going to teach you about something, and then I'm going to also teach you the exceptions. So there are a few transition metals that exist in nature with only one oxidation charge. And you may have noticed that with the lanthanides and actinides as well. I'm going to give you the three most common. Zinc exists as a positive two. Cadmium exists as a positive two. And silver exists as a positive one. That means you can say zinc chloride. Now, the formula for zinc chloride would be this, because zinc has a positive 2 charge, and each chlorine is a minus 1, so you need 2 to balance, but you wouldn't necessarily say zinc 2 chloride. Now, this is a very minor detail, and one that I am not overly concerned with. If you called it zinc 2 chloride, I would be fine with that. I just want to make you aware that typically... If it's silver chloride, it's pronounced or articulated as silver chloride, not silver one chloride. So just a few exceptions here that I would like to bring to your attention. Now, as I did with the first video, I'm going to ask you a set of questions, and I'm doing this to hopefully correct any careless errors that you may make because this is relatively straightforward, applying this set of rules. So did you look at the periodic table when you named or wrote this compound? Of course, yes, you're gonna always do that, right? And then my next question, are both species to the right of the stairs? No, one is to the right, one is to the left, i.e. one is a nonmetal, one is a metal. This is an ionic compound which means that we're naming ionic compounds. And the new question, does it have a multiple oxidation state? Let me translate. Is it a transition metal? Is it tin or lead? And of course, lanthanides and actinides. If it is, then you are likely using Roman numerals. So yes, actually, it is, Mr. Peterson. It's a transition metal, and it's not one of the exceptions of zinc, cadmium, or silver. Well, that means that you will use Roman numerals when you are naming this ionic compound, and when you are articulating its name, you will use the Roman numeral. If it is one, silver one, which you could just say silver, because as I said earlier, it exists only as that state. Uh, lead 2, lead 4, when actually uh, writing out the name of the formula. Okay, let's get a little practice here, and then we'll call it good with naming ionic compounds that have multiple oxidation states. 10, 4, oxide. Please start with what you know. You know oxygen has a minus two charge. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna circle it. You know that. So the, you know quite a bit about the anion, the non-metal. Well, you also know, or you're beginning to hopefully understand that this Roman numeral is referring to the charge of the metal, the charge of the cation, not how many, there's not four tens. It's a positive four charge. So we have 10,4 and we have oxygen minus 2 each oxygen. Here's my visual representation. It is oversimplified, but I'm trying to provide that intuition moving forward to avoid careless errors in nomenclature. So here's 
and it has a charge of plus four. Remember, metals are cations. They have positive charges because they give away electrons. And now I've dropped in one oxygen. So I understand that this overall compound is neutral. So I need these to cancel or balance. They're not balanced. So let me drop in yet another oxygen and it is readily apparent that this is now balanced. Count the atoms. I count 110 and two oxygen. The written correct formula for 104 oxide is this. Okay? So again, pause this video, think about it for a minute. One of the most common misconceptions in nomenclature and a mistake that really causes problems and difficulties later on in the course. All right, so now we're going to look at this compound. Can you name it? Try to name it. So now let's look at what we know. Well, we know there's four chlorine atoms and one lead atom. We know chlorine is a halogen and chlorine will assume a minus one charge because it gains one electron, becoming negatively charged overall. It becomes an anion. So let's look at this. Each chlorine, minus one, but there's four of them, okay? Now I have all four of my chlorine ions. Now I'm going to look at that charge. That's a minus four. Next, I'm going to look at the fact that if this is balanced, and it is, and there's only one lead, that this lead must be lead four. And the four refers to the positive charge of the cation, the lead. So this is lead four chloride because the lead has a positive four charge and the chlorine has a negative one. And we started with what we knew. For this formula, we were trying to go to the name and we knew from this formula something about that anion chlorine and all four of those are negative one charges. So you always wanna start with what you know, especially when you're going from a formula to actually naming or writing out um, that formula. So in this video, we've continued to look at IUPAC nomenclature. Uh, and now you're able to, to predict and write names for ionic formulas, including ionic formulas that have fixed and now multiple oxidation states. And I'll see you guys in class.